Hi guys, welcome to this new tutorial series on computer science paper 2 syllabus 2210. In the upcoming series of lessons we're going to look at problem solving and design. And the first lesson is on introduction to computer system and subsystem. Let's jump to the learning outcomes first. From lesson 1 to 5 we're going to learn about how Every computer system is made up of subsystem, which in turn are made up of further subsystem. We're going to use a top-down design approach, also known as stepwise refinement. We'll look at structure diagram, difference between flowchart and pseudocode, which are the two different methods for algorithm design. Then we're going to look at some practical demonstration of library routines and subroutines so that you understand the differences. Let us first understand why do we need problem solving and design. Computer system can be quite complex. When I speak of a given computer system, they may be made up of several parts such as the hardware part, the software part. But for the particular for this particular series we're going to look at the software part, designing of software, designing of programs which then interact at the hardware level, such as memories and so on. So in order to build that particular complex system that will perform a specific task or solve a given series of problems, because when we look at a given problem, any given problem that can be split into several other problems, the task or problem has to be clearly defined showing what is going to be computed and how it is going to be computed. Now this topic looks at the tools that are needed to define the problem clearly. Clearly so that any programmer can understand. Now what is a computer system like I've said? It will be made up of hardware and software and communication between those hardware and software and end users such as people they may communicate with the hardware through the software. Now, any given computer system they may be broken down into subsystem, and each of these subsystems they may be broken down into other subsystems until we have a subsystem which perform a single action. Now, let's say you have a calculator program that you want to develop. Now, this given calculator program will have several other functionalities, such as simple arithmetic, add, subtract, division, and so on. Now, all of these functionalities, for example, multiplication, they may be broken down into other sub-problems or other tasks, such as multiplication of positive numbers, multiplication of one positive numbers and negative numbers. Now, if you look at it, refinement of tasks into sub-tasks is like breaking a very difficult problem into a problem which is less difficult until we make it an easier problem. So you take the difficult problem, you make it a less difficult problem but keeping in mind that it does the same task as the difficult problem here. Now this is broken down further into much easier problem until the problem is easier to understand in this case. Now this is provided by computer, computer IGCSE textbook. So we can have an alarm app that has the following functionality, set alarm, check time, and sound alarm. Now if I look at the set alarm functionality or problem, I can further break this problem because to set up an alarm I need to set time or maybe turn alarm on and off. Same for sound alarm. I can play the sound for two minutes, check off its news, reset or clear the alarm. So when I look at a particular problem, let's say sound alarm, I break it into several other problems until they are much easier problem. For example, sound alarm is quite complex in nature if you try to understand it. But when you look at it, sound alarm is a problem which will involve three different functionalities. Play sound for two minutes, check off snooze, 
rested and clear alarm. You understand the overall problem, which is sound alarm. And each of these problems are going to contribute to solve the difficult problem. So that's about system and subsystem. The main system is an alarm up, and whatever flows down is known as subsystem. This diagram is known as a structure chart, which we are going to understand in the upcoming lessons.